Hi there. I am just sneaking on here. It's really a quick sneak, if they let me, um, to talk to you really, really quickly uh, about Link. It's a really good opportunity, actually, for me to just say thank you. I know so many of you are involved with Link um, as distributors, actually. We have a, a bank of about 70, 70 different distributors who take Link magazine, our community magazine, uh, around the homes of Highworth and then in, in beyond into those communities and villages around us. For many of you, it's you probably get sick of hearing about links, maybe. Uh, a lot of you, though, are new to the area and um, perhaps haven't come across links. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of history. I took the magazine on just over a year ago now. I think it was spring, spring last year, I think. I forget. I'm getting old. <laughs> forget but I think it was last year it just feels like a very long time to be honest and in that same year the magazine was 50 years old so the magazine and I are exactly the same year uh, same age not the same year that's stupid but we're exactly the same age which is amazing and um, a lot has happened in the year that I took it on when I when I um, accepted the role as editor I did a lot of research. I went back into the archives of Link uh, that are held actually by the Historical Society. And it's amazing to see probably every issue of Link that's ever been published. Quite incredible. And I went right back to the very first one. And there I learned about the Reverend Brian Phillips, who at the time was with St. Michael's Church. And he believed that God had given him a vision for a community magazine, a way of reaching out beyond the church to the community of Highworth. And obviously the population of Highworth was much smaller 50 years ago. It was never intended to be a parish magazine, a church magazine in that sense, but a community magazine. And it began with a few articles from people in the church, from uh, Reverend Phillips himself, uh, but very quickly it grew. And so it included poetry and recipes and all manner of things. There was even a section, which is very forward thinking actually, there was even a section for young people and children uh, and was there to be just an encouraging piece of literature coming through people's, um, what do you call those? Letterboxes, that's right. Through their letterboxes. You know, there's enough negativity, isn't there? coming through our TV screens and through our internet. And so we've continued that idea of being a positive news source, in a sense, um, not news in the international sense or the national way, but things that are happening locally here in our town, things that matter to us. And so we continue to get a lot of articles from uh, local organisations and charities, from the schools, from the, from the churches. Perhaps even some of you have written in articles to us. And we produce that every month, pretty much, apart from the summer and Christmas, uh, pretty much uh, every month. And that's something that I personally am so committed to. It was extremely encouraging to read about where the magazine had come from and what had first birthed it. And I have no doubt in my mind that this is a God-breathed vision for this community. Uh, I'm the first. Christian editor in a long time um, to have taken on the magazine and I hope I hope that shows a lot of feedback I've had says that it does show and um, I'm pleased about that because I pray over this magazine a lot and I consider intentionally the articles that we place in the magazine how we present it you see we you can you can talk about Jesus and you can deliver the gospel and you can be Jesus without ever mentioning his name. And it, I, I see that as a big responsibility and a huge part of what I'm in the role to do. The magazine, which differs from a lot of other community magazines, um, is run under the auspices of Highworth Churches Together. So the four churches of Highworth have come together and they support this magazine um, and therefore we 
we take it forward with that in mind. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, it is an enormous privilege, is it not, to be able to take something like this. It's an old one, that's from Christmas. But <laughs> um, to take something like this and shove it through your neighbor's doors, knowing that this contains God. It's God's vision. It's God's love that it comes from the hands of Christians, that it comes from the heart of those who love God. And so I see it as an enormous evangelical tool. It blows my mind when I think about it. We've, we're going into over 6,000 homes every month. What church can say that? What church can say that? That they're working in partnership with their town churches to deliver the good news. It's not a parish magazine. It is not, um, it is not obviously Christian, but if you've ever opened our magazine, you will see the very first piece is entitled First Thought, and in that we present Jesus straight off the bat, um, and we make no pretend in that. We couldn't operate without the team of volunteers that we have. And I, as I said right at the beginning, I'm so grateful to those of you who do volunteer your time, who deliver to your friends and your neighbours. It is incredible. And I'm overwhelmed every month to think that it runs as it does. We could not, absolutely could not have done any of this without Clive Hall. Clive has been with us now. I think he told me for about 10 years. And um, he is a treasure and such a, an encouragement to me. Uh, but he needs to set that down now. He is not getting any younger. None of us are, are we? And uh, he just needs to have a rest. Uh, honestly, when he told me that, filled my heart with dread, to be fair, because we rely on him and his faithfulness and just his kind of, can do attitude to make things run as they do and of course we're not perfect but if we ever get it right it's largely because of Clive so what I'm here to ask really is if whether you would consider uh, prayerfully consider uh, taking on some of that responsibility Clive oversees all our sorting of the magazine into the, the streets where they're delivered and then in supporting our distributors. Um, he will take a lot of those um, copies, you know, in boxes, maybe you receive some yourself, uh, to people who distribute the magazine. Um, but also there's a commitment to be available when the sorting is happening. And the sorting is managed by each of the, the churches, but Clive oversees the whole lot and is always there and is always reliable. And um, we need a new Clive, basically, or two new Clives, or however many it will take <laughs> to um, to take on those responsibilities, actually. I don't ask lightly, but I do ask in faith. And I do believe that um, God is speaking to you right now. If this is something that you feel you could, you could do with us, we're a nice bunch. Uh, you don't have to work with me if you don't want to. But I'm quite nice. And <laughs> we we all model along together. It, it's a serious business. This is the work of God. And as I say, I, I do see it as a huge um, opportunity. So if you would just consider that, I'd be so grateful. You're more than welcome to come and talk to me. You can talk directly to Clive, who will give you all the ins and outs of the job. And you can even talk to Matt Ford if you like, because he'll talk to anybody, frankly. So if you want to discuss it with him, you can. Um, but please give it some thought. Please get back to me if you think it's something you could help with. Perhaps you're recently retired or not so recently retired, but looking for a new opportunity, or actually you just, you weren't looking for anything at all. <laughs> and you just feel actually it is something you could do we're only talking a small number of hours every month. Uh, you get summer off and Christmas. We don't do it every month then. So it, it's 
it's teamwork, isn't it? It's down to teamwork. And um, we need you. So please give it some thought and get back to me as you can. Many thanks. Thank you again for all your support and for all your prayers. Bless you.